If we follow the road south of Fort Hagen, just before we arrive at the Natick Banks area, we find Poseidon Reservoir towering off to the east. We can be sent here for a number of reasons. Today, we have been sent by the Brotherhood of Steel. We're escorting a Brotherhood scribe who's here to collect some valuable information. But we see that someone has been here before us, a feral ghoul. Sure, a waste of a missile, but I might as well use them than hoard them. The feral ghoul was wandering around some catwalks on the exterior of the building. Tiptoeing between a car, we find a staircase allowing us to loot him. At the top of the staircase, we can turn right or left. Turning right leads to a dead end. We find two paths, but they don't take us anywhere. Instead, we need to continue up the stairs. This brings us to another two-path dead end, or we can continue by climbing the stairs to the top of the reservoir. Here we see a pod to the southwest, but the pathway continues off to the southeast. We'll head that way first. We see all sorts of pipes snaking into some sort of large chimney. But then... Someone was... A whole bunch of feral ghouls in this pod. We'll come back to explore the pod in a minute. Heading back outside, we'll head down some steps to explore this rooftop covered in pipes. The roof is occupied by all sorts of tanks. Crossing the roof, we see a long rusted pipe leading to the water. But peering up, it looks like we can climb higher. But we don't find a path to get there from here. So retracing our steps, we can head inside the pod. We find a couple of wall-mounted shelves with ammunition inside and a cam box on an iron girder in the middle of this room. We find an exit to the southeast next to some empty lockers. This leads to a blood-covered platform in the shadow of one of these chimneys. And right next to it is a ramp leading down to another rooftop. But this rooftop is covered with even more tanks. There's no way down, no hatch leading into the building. So heading back up into the room, we find an armor workbench and a double door leading out to a platform to the north. And it's here where we find the staircase leading to the top of the smokestack. Although on the way up, we see a bit of a bug. Looks like this red pipe is clipping into the yellow handrail here. Whoops, I wonder if I can find a mod to fix this. Heading up the ramp, we see some ghouls, but they're already dead. I didn't kill this guy. You saw me discover it for the first time. I'm not exactly sure how he's dead. Maybe it has something to do with the overpass over there to the northeast. Could they have been sniped by some gunners? Following the staircase all the way to the top, we find another dead ghoul. But again, I'm not exactly sure how this guy is already dead. From up here, we get a beautiful view of the area. We see Natick Banks off to the south, with the raider-infested motel nearby, but we don't find a door into the reservoir from up here, so we need to turn around and head down. On our way back, we notice a gap in this pipe. I think this is supposed to be closed because we can see right through the pipe. This side of the model is not opaque. Anyway, we'll take a shortcut down. Jumping all the way down to the ground, we land in front of the door. And when ready, we can head inside the Poseidon Reservoir. Immediately upon entry, we see a catwalk above us with more already dead ghouls and more right at the entrance. But heading inside the nearby pod... Whoop! All right, so they're not all dead. But our activity awakens more. During the kerfluffle, the Brotherhood scribe found the pre-war data. Here's the data. He hacks into a terminal to secure it for the Brotherhood. Data secured. Ready when you are. Taking a look at the terminal, we find three entries. The first one is called Bring Your Kids to Work Day. Uh-oh, I don't like the sound of that. Reminder that tomorrow is Bring Your Kid to Work Day. Although it's against protocol to bring children into the plant, we've decided that this year we will allow two children in at a time for a quick tour. If you'd like to participate, there's a sign-up sheet near the front door. We will have chaperones outside to help with those who want the tour but have more than two kids. As always, be safe. 
management. And oh no, we see that this message was sent on October 22nd, 2077, the day before the bombs dropped. That means that Saturday, October 23rd, the staff of this reservoir had brought their kids here. Does that mean that the ghouls whom we are killing now were once children? Maybe, but they don't look like children. They look adult-sized. I just hope we don't find child-sized skeletons here. In the next one, Reservoir Status, Error 267. Date, October 23rd, 2077. Malfunction at Reservoir Pumping Station. Automated emergency shutoff initiated. Automated emergency shutoff completed. Contact operating manager immediately. So something at the station was damaged when the bombs dropped, but this system detected it, and so shut off the facility. In the final one, Database Online, Database Network Status Online Main Menu, Deleted, Deleted, Deleted. For your safety, this database is now property of the Brotherhood of Steel. Ad Victorium. Ah, oh, and we don't get to see what this was. Actually, this was nothing. If we were to come here without the Brotherhood of Steel, we simply don't find the entry that says Database Online. So in the lore of the game, the Brotherhood is recovering something important here, but in terms of actual gameplay, we don't miss anything by bringing the scribe here. There is one final entry, Security Door Control. and the door opens up at the far end of the room. We'll explore that after we finish exploring everything else. In this little room, we find an armor workstation and the skeleton of a woman near to a chair behind a counter. This must have been the check-in entrance we read about in the terminal. There are cigarettes all over the place. Looks like this receptionist liked to smoke. But after looting a few containers, we don't find the sign-up form mentioned in the terminal. Perhaps it's one of these nameless pieces of paper and the text has long since faded away. But as we're about to continue, oh, look at that. Thankfully, we can shoot through this grating, but we'll have to keep our eyes open. So, do we go down or up? Well, let's try going up for now. Heading up the stairs, we find a ramp that goes around one of these large chimneys, but as we near the end of the ramp... Send that abomination back to hell. Yours, oh, come on. I'm hit. more often. Guys, I said up, not down, up. Please try to stick with me. No, you're just going to mill around? No, whatever. Heading back to where we were, we don't find anything in this corner. So turning around, we can continue up the steps. We pass a crate, and at the very top, we find a little radio nook that the pre-war workers must have used to take a break. Here's a radio, some Mentats gotta stay sharp on the job, and some snacks in a crate. Turning around and walking to the other end of this catwalk, we see those two dead ghouls we saw earlier, and it looks like a dead end until we turn southwest, where we see something lying on top of this pod. Lying on the western corner of the pod, we see black spatter and meaty chunks. What is this? It's not a body we can loot, but nearby we find the Poseidon Reservoir safe key. And right next to it, we find a locked tool case that we can open with the very same key. Inside, all we find is ammunition, an assault rifle, and a 44 pistol. There's a paper decal on this pod, but it's just for decoration. We can't pick up and read any of these notes. The key, however, does not unlock the novice locked toolbox on the other side of this pipe. After picking it, we walk away with some duct tape and ammunition. If we hop on the pipe and walk across, we come to a dead end. There's nothing else up here. So to continue, we can retrace our steps and take the staircase down. Finally, we can loot that nice pile of bodies our companions made earlier. Instead of going through the door just yet, we'll turn west to explore under the floating pod. Here we see tools and scraps strewn about, and in the corner by the front door, we can loot a red toolbox and then the corpses of the ghouls that we killed earlier. Here we do find at least one pre-war skeleton and another locked toolbox on a nearby cabinet. But that's it for this corner. So turning around, we can go through the small door to the southwest where we killed all those ghouls. 
we see a workbench to the left and another door to the right. Going left first, we find a makeshift battery, but there's not much room to move around here. The vats take up most of the room. We do find two lockers, but there's nothing in them. Though in the southern corner, we do find a stash of purified water. Damn, I'm stumbling all over the place. I wish we could see where we're going. Looking above the weapons workbench, we find a cabinet and a cooler with some meat inside. But that's about it for this cozy little corner. So now we'll turn around and go through the northwestern door, where we find a bathroom scale trap. After disarming it, we see that it was connected to a makeshift cigar box bomb on a nearby wall. This room has a vaulted ceiling, but it's again filled with pipes. There's not much else to find here. We see water leaking out of the pipes, but looking closer, we again see a little bit of a mesh glitch here. With that, we have one place left to explore. Heading east, we can loot a few more bodies. We find the security door to the southeast that we opened from the terminal. Turning left before it, however, we find another pre-war skeleton and a corner behind one of these vats, but nothing here. So now, going through the double door, we see that it leads to a restricted area. Heading down the hallway, we find a doorway to the right. Inside, we can loot a first aid kit and a wall-mounted mirror. But then continuing southeast on the hallway, we find the boss of this reservoir, a glowing one. This is the They'll part of the job that I love. Brotherhood after this. Got it. Great time to run out of fusion core fuel. I wonder who this guy was. The foreman of this power plant? We learn from the Fallout 4 official strategy guide that this plant used water to produce energy, which was then used to power Poseidon Energy's experiments elsewhere in the Commonwealth. But strange again that so many of these ghouls here in this room were already dead. Moving to the north, we see a chemistry station hiding in this corner, and right next to it, we find an end of dungeon steamer trunk. And next to it, we find a large floor safe that we can unlock with the Poseidon Reservoir safe key that we found on top of the pod next to the toolbox. Inside, we find a stash of thrown explosives, chems, and ammunition. But that's it for the interior. Looking up again, we see that it's a huge space, but there's nothing hiding on any of those pipes. With that, we fully explore the interior of the Poseidon Reservoir. Once outside, we can turn left to explore the exterior. We pass by a parking lot, and here's that big rusted pipe again. There was something about this that piqued my curiosity. Leaping on top of it, we see that at one time it led right into the factory, but the pipe is broken, and we can't access this area because it's cornered off with a chain link fence. I wonder what it could be hiding. Maybe we can still find a way in there, following the pipe all the way to the water. Hey, 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 look at that. Sure enough, we find a gap in the pipe, but it's partially submerged, so we'll hop out of our power armor for now. We see a cash rail sign on the side of this pipe. Looks like we should expect some goodies. Climbing up the pipe, it turns a corner and lets us out right inside that cornered off area. Exploring behind the pipe, we find the skeleton of a US military service member and a duffel bag filled with ammunition, scrap, and a combat rifle. But on a table nearby, we find a very rare boxed robot model kit. We can get robot model kits from Vault-Tec lunchboxes, but there are a set number of boxed robot model kits in the game, so this is pretty rare. Next to this is a bottle cap mine. And with that, we fully loot the secrets of the Poseidon Reservoir. We do see more pipes behind the place, but no more secret compartments. But maybe I can use this blue one to reach these others in the middle of Lake Kachituate. After today, it's going to be hard to go back to patrolling the Pridwin. Oh, how, how did the kid get up here? Oh, well, leaping across. We see that the large pipe is sealed off, no way inside, and leaping down to the small pipe, we find the skeleton of a woman. Looks like she was getting ready to go out trick-or-treating. She has her trick-or-treat basket and some dandy boy apples. But how did she get all the way out here? After killing some nearby Mirelurks just for the heck of it, What 
was that? Was that the scribe on? No. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, no, he's dead. But for some reason, <laughs> I can't tell if he's... he's he, he said no, please, as if he was dying, but, but he's cut it. <laughs> just dog paddling. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I lost my brotherhood scribe. Lancer Knight Captain Kells is going to be upset. And with that, we finish exploring the Poseidon Reservoir. I'm publishing shorter content this week as I prepare for a business trip. When I get back, I'm going to have a bunch of exciting new content to share. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. It's everyone's favorite villain to hate from Fallout 3. This shirt comes in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes and in a wide array of colors. The design comes on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. I'm becoming more active on Twitter. I use Twitter to respond to viewers and to make channel announcements. Like if I have a super secret project I'm working on. Not that I do, but hey, if I did, well, that's where I would announce it. So if you're active on Twitter, I encourage you to follow me at Oxhorn. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with another brand new video.